all right so now we've got kind of as human beings we're 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 being programmed or programming um and then now you're in life and life is happening and all of a sudden an event takes takes place and i i don't want to make one up but i think that it's an interesting idea for somebody to say well you know he just went off right right yeah the kid that walked into um the quebec uh, yeah that's you know, a great example uh, uh, mosque recently and and shot six people dead um i i would say didn't just one day wake up and decide he was just going to go and shoot people in a mosque i mean he could have went anywhere right so there were some real um there was some real reasoning behind that um and it was fallacious and it was you know the reasoning and the rationale just if if you come from do no harm mm -hmm. right do the children no harm right um then then that's one way way of programming but when you walk into a mosque mm -hmm. you're violating that yeah and totally what would what what do you think would have ha what do you think happened well you know things like that give us all a heavy heart and they're so sad yeah. and and it at the end of the day it, you know there had to have been some sort of underlying fear sets of fears or vulnerabilities that we all have that we're innately human and you know in information systems some are more vulnerable than others you have mm -hmm. the unpatched server you know from uh, 12 years ago that's obviously more vulnerable than something that's been protected right similarly with human beings and i think people who want to exploit others using malicious ideas actually look for the more vulnerable mm. systems or people uh whether you're, whether it's hacking or whether it's trying to mm. cultivate people to do hate crimes for whatever cause, for whatever side of whatever view, right. they're going to look for those vulnerable uh, cognitive systems, exploit those systems and come up with messages or cognitive malware, mental malware mm. that repeatedly, repeatedly and effectively exploit and produce reliably re reliable results usually very undesirable like that kind of like a conditioning like it's uh like it's a constant and over it, it, one of the things that i worry about with uh, especially with facebook um because facebook uh knows everything that you post yeah and uh, look I, I i i like facebook but i used to love facebook but now i noticed um that facebook puts things on my keeps things off of my feed or my wall um, and put and deliberately puts other things on my wall. Yeah. So I have friends that have different political views. I never see their posts. No. Um, but people that have the similar views, I see their posts all the time. It's almost like reinforcing. It's a positive feedback. Loop, yeah. And that's a real problem. Yeah. yeah. And, and there could be, what I'm saying is there could be a manipulation of that so that because there are times, especially when I see live feed of uh, you know a police officer shooting someone okay right that's a good uh, example and and the over and over and over and over again and it gets my ire up and i get angry and i'm like you know and so i can see that could be considered a kind of malware and even conditioning because i see it all the time and i and, and there was a time where i just would just be like this is bullshit we've got to stop it and i would go down my little trying to make sure that you know i had a voice that was saying this is wrong and of course you know the blue line is so important um police officers are so important but they're serving the public humanity and so when police officers do things that i'm sure um and maybe uh, a function of this malware uh, maybe that you know they're just they're just taught this is what you do in this situation or this is what you do blanket all right. situations pull your weapon first get the person to obey you if they don't obey you you shoot them well <laughs> now i don't know i'm not uh, claiming that that's their sure. training i'm not claiming that's their training but it sure seems like it well and so there's there's i think two issues layered on top of each other mm -hmm. there um the facebook one will circle back to because i think yeah. that's very fundamental to what we're talking about and I mean, in, in looking at how cognitive malware relates there, it can be both ways, right? Mm -hmm. Because on one hand, um, if, you know, if you know the hot buttons of people in general, you know what things will cause an amygdala hijack in an officer, mm -hmm. and you know what things will cause a 
cause similar type of phenomenon in people that you can induce to push the envelope to for mm. your cause. Yeah. What do you do if you want power? I mean, the Star Wars movie has depicted this great. Yeah. You start a war, you get people going against each other from both sides, and you control both sides. <laughs> or you benefit from the conflict mm -hmm. of both sides. So on one hand, you probably have uh, people who are who are you know riled up to then push the buttons mm -hmm. of police officers and then statistically if it happens a million times and three of those officers just happen to have too hot a temper or the wrong day or the person looks like somebody who maybe shot their partner a month before really both sides are set up to fail and i think most officers are good i think most officers are trained well mm -hmm. i have a lot of friends and family in that line of work and nothing mm -hmm. but respect for the risk mm -hmm. they take and the fear and the difficulty of making split second decisions. Right. And then I also respect and appreciate the viewpoints of people who have been victims of things, grown up in environments where they feel the system is the enemy. But what's really concerning is people with with voice, with message and resources can exploit both of those things yeah. and cause a great deal of conflict. And sometimes it might be accidental that that's occurring. Mm. Sometimes people unknowingly purvey malware, or sometimes it might be very deliberate and very sinister. I think both probably happen. Yeah. Your I'm point sure about Facebook is very, very interesting and well-informed, though, because one of the first things you do with malware is establish command and, com command and control communication. Mm -hmm. Normally, you go to Google, mm -hmm. but if you're exploited, maybe you're redirected somewhere else that's not Google. Right. Maybe when you go to log into Facebook, we jack your credentials because mm -hmm. you go to a page that looks like Facebook, but really it isn't. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a similar parallel. Um, if if I have cognitive malware and it hooks you, what do I do? I naturally establish command and control communication. Join our Facebook page. Come to our weekly meetup. Mm -hmm. You know, sign up to my blog. And and those things are very powerful tools that allow for us to to communicate the most powerful and wonderful ideas and they're progressive yeah but they can also be used maliciously as, as you state and mm -hmm. and we're all subject to it even unknowingly because we seek out more of what reinforces what we already know mm -hmm. it becomes a positive feedback loop and maybe maybe in a month i go from being on one spot of okay i'm sad about one shooting officer involved shooting on one side of it or the other yeah but then by the time I'm done with social media, I'm completely polarized on the topic. Yeah, that, that's happened to me many times. And, and you're, you just nailed it for me because that's exactly what happens. And so I, I actually, as, an, as a step um, to, I, I think, uh, and, and I'm not advocating everybody do this, but this was a step for me. I actually took Facebook off my phone. So Smart. I no longer get um, updates. I no longer get anything on my phone from Facebook. Um, at all. If I interact with Facebook, it would be on a computer. And then it's limited time because I don't spend a lot of time in front of my computer unless I'm writing. Right. And at that point, I don't even have the internet on. So um, I, I think that one of the main things that I got hooked on was this idea that um, uh, my rights as a, as a US citizen um, could be violated because I see so many of these uh, videos come up. YouTube's another one of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm not saying, you know, cause my podcast is on YouTube. Please don't get rid of YouTube, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, like, and subscribe. But the funny thing is, is that you have like this idea that can be, um, that, that can be reinforced, especially if you just type in the search right bar, um, anything. And the next thing you know, you get a list of oh, yeah. all and, and divergent, um, you know, topics or sides of the, of the topic. So, um, you know, just because you put in there, you're looking for, you know, um, uh, how to do yoga on a mountaintop, right? You might find how to do yoga on a mountaintop, you know, uh, in multiple different ways or, or, you know, no, you know, avoid yoga on a mountaintop cause you could die. <laughs> right, yeah. You know I mean? There's all these different right. ways, but then it gets reinforced with all the other, uh, metadata that's out there. It does, and it, it's very problematic. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it really, really can cause issues. Um, and, and it's weird, it, social media, communication and social media represent power. 
And the power of communication in general has changed the world for good over and over again. Mm. I mean, the, the power of how our, how our brains can respond to cognitive software updates, good or bad, have been underscored by the starts of many wars. Mm. We've, we've seen, uh, obviously, the ways that, that uh, sinister leaders like Adolf Hitler yep. have used cognitive software to manipulate the minds of many. Uh, now, that, that would be a good things. that would actually be a really good exercise um, to take a look at how he did that because I mean from the time that he wrote Mein Kampf um, it, it, before that obviously but beyond that um, a lot of uh, a lot of his struggle as it were um, was making the fatherland great again right um, and I think uh, part of it was that you know he they were economically uh, distraught uh, Germany was not in good good a good shape at all after world war one um but what did he how did he like how did he insert that into the populace well if you look at it 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 was um and we'll get to a more positive example in a moment Great. I appreciate but that. but on that example if we look at it it was uh, a series of messages mm -hmm. introduced gradually so uh, in malware, we have a dropper file that establishes usually your initial foothold, but it's not enough to do what you want to do. You have to do lots more steps after that. Okay. Um, and, and and pivot laterally, infect other machines. Mm -hmm. So clearly, he had some very salient ideas and a lot of vulnerable systems. So yeah. if we need to be cautious, it's any time there's a great deal of fear, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Right now, I worry about the world in, in general with this because we're all a little more vulnerable perhaps than we've been in the past. Mm. You know, information systems and technology are evolving at a rapid rate. Uh, we have self-driving, drone delivery, automation, robotics. I mean, literally the way, the landscape of what it means to be human is changing more rapidly than we can possibly comprehend. Yeah. And, and I mean, we literally, the human brain does not do well with exponential curves. Mm. Very difficult. Um, um, uh, Taleb did some great books on that about nonlinear progressions and how terrible we do at predicting them. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we look at this, it's a, big, it's a big problem. And if you go back to Germany after World War I, as you said, they were impoverished. Mm -hmm. They were desperate. They, some of them were starving. Yeah. So if somebody comes along with ideas that are salient and powerful and they ascribe blame somewhere and then also give you a way, a roadmap to what you believe is a better future, mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll, you'll begin to maybe go down that road. Yep. And then with cognitive dissonance theory, what happens is each time we commit an act, um, we tend to, there's a dissonance if it departs from our values. So we rationalize until that dissonance goes away, and now we have a new anchoring point or baseline. Right. So that's how you get people who you may have known them when they were five years old. The people who commit evil acts aren't necessarily don't necessarily start out evil. Right. You know, they might be really, really good people, the prettiest baby ever, the nicest little five-year-old, <laughs> and then over time, incrementally, it's very easy to drift off course. And then if it's facilitated in a in a sinister manner, it can obviously drift off course a lot yeah. faster and in mass. Well, it, it, it may be on course. Yeah, or, or on course you for know, something not. According so, yeah. to the design of the malware, or according to the design of the dissonance. Well said.